people think it's like a gentleman's club. No, it's just yeah, yeah, we yeah. are gentlemen and yeah, we've yeah. formed at the club. I wanna wake up, get dressed, go make up, meet gang, uptown, go drink, do something, do something, get live, see something, hear something, get hype. You know the way it feels when you're intoxicated, the beats and the bass and you get to raving. Close my eyes and I roll them back, cause I'm a grown back in a heart. It's from when we used to hang out at my house, we had like a little annex and it used to be like called like the gentleman's club. So like all my friends would come around and we'd all hang out there and, you know, do things. That sounds really weird. Yeah, that does, actually sound, <laughs> that does sound really weird. Yeah, and they'd just make music and hang out. There was a bunch of us. We asked a few other people initially as well to be a part of it, but they declined. I'm unlucky for that. <laughs> they lost, yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Lewis. My name's Saul and I am one third of the group Gentlemen's Club. My name's Amani, I'm the guy with the afro. Organisation, I'm the chaotic one in the group. Saul's, as well as producing, is amazing at the back end of stuff and keeping the business running. He does all of our graphics, our website, you know, he helps with socials, he, he does a lot. And then Amani, he's amazing with like production ideas. He brightens up the days. There'll be times when, for example, we'll be in an airport and we're hungover and we're hating life. And I'll just turn my head and look at Amani. And he's just got this stupid face that just really cheers me up and it just makes you realise that everything's all right at the end of the day. Lewis is just, he's always there morally, so any issues I can just call him up and he's always there, which is nice. Hey, hey, stop. Stop. hey. Stop. hey. Stop. 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 Sorry, I use logic. So I'm like, oh. The sound that we were originally producing was predominantly reason. Dubstep was definitely reason based. I was actually using FL Studio to begin with and I just found it so hard and then my friend actually introduced me to Reason. It just clicked, it just made sense and then from there I just, just used it. 99% of all bassline music was arranged on Reason and because I was such a big fan of that music I wanted to download Reason first so I could recreate these songs and I couldn't recreate them, they were shocking and it was just kind of ride it from there and carry on making different stuff. Someone like leaked a, a file online or someone's reason file and I just kind of used that to learn and I kept on remixing that project over and over again until I finally found my own style and then after that I ran with it. I didn't actually want to DJ. When mm. I first played out I wanted to just produce. I thought that was a viable way of having an income. It's not unless you're a super producer. Then I got thrown into DJing and now I love DJing as probably, maybe, yeah, probably as much as um, producing. I think they both just get synced into one. It's quite nice. Their dedication to whatever they put their minds to, the hard work and effort that they put in. Just being level-headed and we always check each other. If someone steps out of line. I generally respect them as people, I think. They're just great people as well. They're my brothers. To be honest, I wouldn't say there is that many um, disagreements within the crew. We all kind of have the same same vision for the project, so we're quite in unison. How oh, the other boys have said this. <laughs> I think we'd all be doing well individually, but we wouldn't have taken it to like the next, next level. level. I'm very thankful that this, this happened. Usually like start ideas individually, pass them between us, and then solves the mix mastery. But there isn't like a process. There isn't is there? a process at all. It'd just be like someone would jump in the chat and say, hey, oh boys, just made this. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's three of us, we can make three times as much music, so. The Dropbox is, <laughs> in, in terms of like actual number of songs, we could release like multiple albums. Like, wow. yeah, yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. 30, 40 tunes like ready to go, probably already, and then never mind actual like semi finished. Or like even just ideas. Ideas, yeah. We've got like a folder of oh, just yeah. beats. We've got like hundreds of Yeah, there's hundreds of yeah, 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 like yeah. 60 beats there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Having to please everyone in the group. The one issue, which is probably the financial side of it, where people don't realise is, as an act, if you're booked for a show, a solo act will get a solo 
pay where with a trio you have to split that split that three ways so that's where the, the hardships come from but everything else with being in a trio was definitely beneficial the positive is heavily outweigh the negatives we've grown as people we've grown as producers we've grown as like business people as well so i think generally we work pretty well together having a, a, a vision and creating everything like even down to the artwork and promo videos and the promo schedule for us it's it's fun and it's kind of addictive as well having seen progression it's nice to uh, to build something yeah, and then yeah. it pan out exactly how you want to at the end it's so satisfying so yeah, yeah. yeah. we want to release a pop song we can release a pop song if you want to release a house tune if you want to release a banger we can yeah, yeah. we can do whatever we want that's yeah. where we want to be it's fun because people are accepting it as well we we'll release like different stuff to what our old fans are used to, and they've been so supportive. Yeah, they've like followed us along, and I think they're just with us for the journey now, which is great. <laughs>